We've got the screws setting down inside and I'm just getting ready to time them. And uh, being at the walls, brought the bottom of the mixer in a little bit. We've got to cut this leading edge off of both uh, screws. This is rubbing against the floor and the sidewall at the bottom. It's just cutting in there a little bit. So we're going to cut a little bit off of here on uh, each leading edge of the screw. We're going to cut that off because we're going to be rubbing hard right here into the floor. This screw here, we've got to raise it up a little bit. That one is real tight to the floor, so we've got to shim the uh, screw up in the air. So we've got the rear screw hanging from the gantry so that when I cut that, um, I'm not cutting close to the floor. So we've got that raised up. We'll cut that corner off, get that timed in place, and uh, then we can roll that one around and make sure it's not going to hit anywhere before we move up to the front screw. got that leading edge on that rear screw cut now I've got this screw right where I need it all right now we're gonna set it down uh, in place we can lower it but when we lower this one we've got to raise it up off the floor so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, three-quarter inch washers I'm going to try one washer underneath the screw where it sets down on top of the planetary and we'll see what one washer does I've had to do this before this is the third mixer that we've had to raise the screws up a little bit that's fine it's um, it's what they suggest to do uh, from Supreme. If your screw is too low, is to just shim it with just regular washers. So we're gonna get some washers in there, set it down on top of the washers, and uh, see what we gain by using just one washer. Now we have this, uh, Screw all lined up now. We've got that leading edge cut off. Now uh, I've got a couple of bolts in here, but you can see it's tight to the floor. I mean, it is scrubbing right there. So I don't know if one washer is going to do it or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to walkers in there
Alright, now we're good. Pretty good. Get fingertip underneath there. Now we'll just roll this. Now we'll just roll this around and see how it does the back one. There's quite a gap on the back one, more than the front. Doesn't look like we're going to be getting any primer on there, does it, Jay? Nope. No, not today. Well, uh, we were shooting to have primer going on that mixer wagon by this afternoon, but um, Jay had an interruption here a little while ago on an alley scraper time and chain and whatnot. And then we just got a phone call a little while ago that Jared had a tie rod break on uh, W900. So he's gone to Kenworth to get a tie rod in. And the truck is sitting on the side of the road right now. So we're headed over now to get that tore apart. And it's either going to come apart real easy or it's going to be a real pain in the ass. So... We got just a minor interruption, but we got to keep the manure team going too. So we're going to be at a spot where the truck is broke down here in a little bit, and we'll join you guys there when we get there. All right, we just pulled up here, and he's got a broken tie rod on this left hand side here so we're hoping this comes apart rather easy but um let's see how it does here this 15 16 15 down on that bolt that's on oh, that on the clamp bottom. yeah All right, we got the old one out, got the new one in. We're just going to fire it up and line it up. Um, what took longer, Jay? I think it took longer to get the torch hoses out and get them back rolled up. All right, Jared's going to fire this up. We're going to line that up in there. All right, we got Jared up and going. We were here for a half hour. That's all it took get that on there so we locked out again so let's get her going hood coming down Well, we got Jared up and going here. We're turning around on this dead end road, and he pulled up there, back then, went to pull forward, and bang, dropped the tie rod in. So, uh, he ended up jumping in a pickup that was over here and ran and got parts, and he no more than got back here right when we were just getting her apart, and it could not have went any easier. The tie rod end was $104, and we probably better get another one for the other side. Now, um, I was really worried that uh, they were going to give him the wrong end, and uh, just for that, he should have ended up getting both of them anyways. We probably spent more time getting stuff ready to go to come over here than what the job took. took. We ended up bringing a large torch set with us, which the army truck here has, um, it just has an acetylene oxygen set up, and we ended up bringing the large um, propane oxygen set up that we have with the large rosebud, because I didn't think that damn uh, tie rod end was going to come out of the steering arm, but I cut the nut off, and we were able to pound the old tie rod out of the steering arm. And the uh, tie rod itself 
we heated that tube up and that really didn't take much no. you know that heated it up once and it spun right out so for a truck that's 20 years old and those haven't been replaced i mean come on you know that's not bad usually when you go to replace a tie rod end like that you end up replacing a bunch of them because you got to take different things apart to to get through the problem that you initially went to fix so we lucked out so we're gonna head back to the shop maybe we can get primer on tonight maybe maybe so all we have left to do now is just get the caps put on the screw now this is a disc blade this is actually a John Deere disc blade and we don't have a John Deere disc anymore so I know it's a new blade it'll just last longer but uh, that's the open top of the screw they just put caps on there like that there's a three quarter inch nut welded across that crossbar you just set that down in there like that and then I'm gonna weld a washer to the top of the disc blade uh, just so that we can hold that blade down with a three quarter inch bolt uh, what I have on the front screw is a, is a uh, spare cap. This is actually an old blade off of our Landall disc. That's already got the washer welded on the end. So I didn't have any more used blades, but I have a few of them John Deere blades kicking around. So uh, that's what we're going to use on the rear screw. So we're just going to weld that washer down, and then uh, we're going to be able to climb out of the mixer here. And get ready to uh, throw the primer on here. I've got to put the tail light brackets on the back and then you can hear the guys in the background there sanding away on the rest of it. This is the, the bottom of the front screw here. Back here you got the kicker plate laid in there and welded down. And then I ended up laying this piece of flat steel on there. And I did this to the other mixer wagon too because it was uh, drawing a lot of power out of the tractor. And it seems to run a little easier with this flat piece of steel on there. And what this is is abrasive resistant steel cut out of the material that was in this door section here so it is abrasive resistant steel what i need to do is have somebody cut me some of them out of thicker material that's just quarter inch we get about six months out of this plate here we'll just cut that off and, and slap another one on there but for now we're just going to use that quarter inch material so we've got everything done on the inside of the mixer that flat piece of steel up on the top side we've added that in there I don't know if you could see quite see that or not but that's where the rubber ring bolts too so we're all done with the inside now we're just going to run it quick make sure there's nothing rubbing which we've spun it by hand um, and it, it did fine but we're just going to start it up with the PTO here and um, run it for a quick second and then we're going to reposition this thing and unhook it and get the primer on it. for primer. Jay's got this all cleaned up, sanded down. There's all our various pieces here that go on the front of the conveyor. There's the conveyor there. Everything's all ready to go. We've got the um, 
yellow frame that holds the conveyor, we've got that off. That's actually sitting outside right now. We don't think we're gonna paint that. It doesn't seem to be in that bad of condition. And uh, for what it's worth, we'll speed things up here a little bit and uh, maybe we'll skip painting that. And what I ended up putting on this mixer wagon, this mixer wagon didn't have tail lights on the back of it. And these tail light cabinets here are off of the 900 mixer. Um, they're burnt a little bit, but they're all cleaned up, so they're gonna, primer's gonna, it's gonna hold primer good. Now this one here, something happened to this one. This one's bent up a little bit. Kinds of add a, adds a little bit of character to it, so we're going to leave that alone. I couldn't straighten it all that well. The only way I could have straightened it is to cut the back out, straighten this all out, and then weld the back back on. I said, oh, that's not really worth uh, getting into. Uh, the jack that came on this mixer is set up, and we didn't want to take the time to um, free that up. So this jack here is off of the 900 mixer. That went through the fire. Um, that's been cleaned up with a wire wheel. And that there is the um, PTO shroud that's gonna go on the front. Once we take the gearbox off, this two-speed gearbox is coming off in there. And once that's off in there, there's a bearing holder that's gonna set right here. And then that shroud goes on. Um, the back side of that to protect that back end of that yoke and then you can flip the uh, front of it up to grease the U-joint uh, on the back of the power shaft. So we're going to get after it with the primer here. Um, we've got another skid steer in here with a oil leak of some kind. Joe's getting after that now. He's going to get after it with a pressure washer blow all the freaking chaff out of there. We don't know where it's leaking from. And, um, well, this is the, what was the other one that was in here? That was the E2. A number of you have been asking how the, the um, Kubota skid steer is doing, and we got to do a video on that here uh, soon. So, we're going to get after the primer. Uh, the hood section is on the 7720. We got to put the decals on it yet. Jared put the side panels on this morning. They need to be uh, buffed out or something. Um, you know, not only are they dirty, but um, they need to be polished up a little bit. They're not bad, but they need to be polished. This panel was replaced along with that back one there, and then you know everything on the front here. Now the hood is hitting on these. Um, cap screws here so we're just going to grind them right off to almost nothing I was thinking about just putting a bead of weld along here taking them bolts right out but then I got to worry about getting this oil cooler too hot when I weld it so we're just gonna grind them off in there so ah we're gonna get after the primer well that is all in primer now um, we're going to shoot the red paint on it tomorrow. What we used is a um, black uh, primer. It seems to be easier to spray over the top of the black than it is to spray over the top of gray. I don't know why it just worked out better that way for us anyway. So that's, uh, that's going to do her. So with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. Right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> oh, they ain't paying attention to me. They're cleaning up paint guns. So that's going to do it, folks. So hit the thumbs up. Drop me a comment down below. You know what to do. We'll catch you at the next video.